Welcome to episode 37 of the Independent Agent Podcast. I'm Justin here with my stunningly attractive brother, Jordan. It's, it's true. And uh, I also am wearing a nice shirt today. And you're a wearing wrinkles, a lot of wrinkles. Yes. A lot of wrinkles. Had, had to pull this one out of, out of, out <laughs> the, of the woodwork. What happened? <laughs> Actually, this was a gift from Olivia. And okay. it says accurate. Why? Because your brother, as you know, is right very often. And so she thought it fitting that I have a t-shirt that actually says accurate on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty stunned, aren't you? You're left speechless. I... Uh, I know. I... I uh... Tell me about the drink. So we're drinking mint <laughs> juleps today. <laughs> okay, so I've actually never had a mint julep before. So when I when I looked even it when up, you went to the one event, what event did I go to? Oh no, you went, you didn't go to the horse racing thing with them. No, the with, with with that insurance company that we won't name. Yeah, yes. that had an, an event um, that I was invited to, uh, but my wife was like nine months pregnant. This is like a decade ago, dude. This was like. 10 years We're ago old. today. That's nuts. Or maybe she was pregnant with Addy. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I wasn't invited. You weren't. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. Anyway, so we're having a mint julep. Um, and I was just surprised. I thought a mint julep was a lot fancier than what it is. It's essentially bourbon, uh, muddled mint, a little bit of simple syrup, uh, and then some Angostura bitters. It's very simple. On the rocks. Um, okay. So here's to something new. Mm. Man, that's bad. Puh. That's not bad. Oh, that's terrible. Oh. Because oh. Oh, you can taste the alcohol. You don't like the taste of alcohol. Okay. I'm drinking my Ultra right now. I'm enjoying that. Okay. Thank I, I actually think it's pretty good. The, the mint is really r refreshing. Mm. Um, How can we be so opposite? You're adopted. I just have taste buds. Um, dude, every time I adjust, remember I said that I went to that, um, that stretch lab place, mm -hmm. right? And the, so I go to this stretch lab, but I, I don't know if they're... They're out of business now. Are they out of, well, they're, they can't operate right now, but I don't know if they're all over the country or whatever it is, but they, they're, they're like a massage envy, but for stretching, right? And so I go, I do an hour stretch, and this gal like stretch it tries to stretch my body because basically she's like you have zero flexibility and she can't do anything but i thought it would be like uh it hurts so good like a deep tissue massage it's days later and it still hurts so bad like the whole thing was painful it was not a fun experience i'm sure it was really helpful for me but i'm still dying like i can't even like sit in a chair without like tweaking out man <laughs> look you know first time stretching Next week, you'll work on exercise. Hey, I've been doing that X3 bar. X3, baby. X3. The band workout you can do when you can't go to a gym. <laughs> or when you're fat like me and you just wouldn't go to a gym anyway. Yeah, quick product plug. It's a 10-minute workout, and it actually kills you if you do it hard. You don't do it hard? <laughs> <laughs> um... I, I just try to make sure I don't hurt myself. <laughs> well, maybe if you were more flexible. <laughs> All right. First question. For as long as I've been at the agency, we've conducted employee reviews at the end of the year. This also happens to be the most stressful and difficult time of the year to schedule these conversations, mainly due to a heavy renewal book and employees being out for the holidays. Everyone's edgy and trying to get a lot done before the end of the year, and I don't feel like the conversations are productive with everything else we have going on. How do you handle employee reviews? How do we handle employee reviews, Justin? Go ahead, Jordan. Um, we do ours every three, four years at least. <laughs> Definitely every three or four years. Um, we're terrible at employee reviews, so that's really not a great question. Uh, actually... Uh, Ashton, uh, who's on our total CSR team, she was here for about three months and she walked in and she's like, Hey, I, I think it's time for my review. And we're like, what are you talking about? She's like, no, I want, 
you know, I've been here for three months and I want to know how I'm doing. I go, I, I don't know really what to do, but you can go ask Trent and I'm sure he'll put together something for you. So anyway, she ended up putting together a, a review process for us to review her by. Um, so I think we have one established on Total CSR now. On Goodman, Justin meets with people once a month, right? Yeah. They tell you all of their hearts, pains, and desires. <laughs> Definitely, they tell me all of their desires, especially Mike. Uh, I'm just not a review guy. I, I, I mean, you'll know if I'm not happy. So I believe that by waiting till the end of the year, you know, you're just so far in the process that you can't course correct and it's unfair that you tolerate this behavior 11 months straight and then you tell them, especially that time, no wonder it doesn't go well. We meet on a monthly basis. And when so the, the individual on our team comes in the uh, in, in this, this room here. We sit down, we have a conversation, what's going well, what's not. And if there's any negative feedback, I'll give it at that time. I'll also give the positive feedback I'm seeing. So they're not waiting until the end of the year. The advantage is we can course correct early and it's never a surprise if someone is going to lose their job at our company, they are going to know because I've probably had a conversation three months running saying, you're not doing this right. You're not doing this right. And then it becomes a matter of... Yeah, but you say that every time we've ever let someone go, they look at us like, what? Because... <laughs> they're always surprised. But you can't say that, they, that they're going to know. They, they should know. Right? That's what I'm saying is, but they, in, but every single time we've ever let someone go, there's that look in their eyes like, I, I'm so surprised. I I can't believe that this happened. You yes. missed your KPIs, and and but they don't have a right to be surprised because you said what the issue was and you've communicated that this is not workable for us. Hence, I need you to correct it. And if I ask anybody something three times to do it and they haven't made significant strides to solve that problem, and I don't see that improvement happening over a three-month window, it means they're not respecting, one, the company, and two, uh, my role as their boss in the equation. And uh, especially for a Napoleon like me, I just can't sit <laughs> with that. Um, yeah, Justin is all of five foot two, if you guys were wondering. With, with heels on, I'm five four. You should see him in stilettos. <laughs> but seriously, you need to have the conversation uh, frequently. And it is a conversation. And there may be things I ask, hey, is there something I can do better? And oftentimes it's, yeah, Justin, you know, between Jordan and you, you're running two companies. I could see you more engaged in this part of the process. That would be helpful. And then I endeavor to change that. Jordan? Jordan? Do you? I, I told Justin that... Whenever he wants me to talk, he always looks at me and says, "Jordan." Isn't that what like they do on on the uh, news channels? Um, yeah, yeah, on the on the news channels. We're like a news channel. We are. I I wish I wish we could just have it like a daily news. We should do a daily news. We could do daily news, and it could be us with our interpretation, and we can just make it up like both. But like do. drunk history, like just get slammed. Read the news articles, and then just. At like four o'clock, just announce everything that happened. I like it. So do I. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, again, I, I don't have a lot of legs to stand on reviews. I'm terrible at them. I guess we have conversations, and in my opinion, if you're an adult, we should be able to have a conversation, and I can tell you what you're doing right or wrong, and it doesn't need to be some formal fancy thing, but I know laws and proper business operations dictate you should do otherwise, but I'm just not my forte, if you would. That's why Justin does it. And I, I think it's important to ask on the onboarding side of things, what's important to that individual. Like with Ashton, we learned that that's an important part of the process for her to know because she wants to perform at a very high level. Mm. You know what we should do In, into our upcoming um, new new launch. We should put a review thing in there, like employee review forms. They've already been developed, but you were paying attention. So, what do you mean they've been developed? You can go talk to Ashton. 
So we're going to include that? It's already included. Oh, okay. This guy. So <laughs> smug. <laughs> I'll send you the memo next time. So in short, if you have review <laughs> questions, reach out to me. Okay. Or Ashton. Or Ashton. Probably Ashton. <laughs> Probably Ashton. Uh, our agency has acquired five additional agencies over the last two years. How come we can't say that? Why haven't we acquired five agencies over the last two years? Because we don't do reviews. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, in each transaction, we inherit a lot of things, including their carriers. We now have contracts with over 100 carriers and commercial lines alone. It has become a headache to manage, but everyone seems to be loyal to certain carriers for one reason or another. How do we even start the carrier consolidation process with so many involved? So, Justin? <laughs> I actually had this conversation a week ago, and I don't think I'm really able to share who they are, but um, their company is going through a massive project on that, and he's behind all of this. And so you need clean data, number one, and data's gotta drive these decisions. So what data do you need? You need to know the premium volume with these carriers. You need to know what the contingency agreements are with each of these carriers. You also need to know the number of clients with them, what the total uh, revenue including contingencies are, and then what the growth pattern is. So if you guys are shrinking year over year, or are you growing with them? Because you, you literally forgot the most important thing. What percent commission they pay? That too. What do you mean that too? That number one. If you've got 10 million with a carrier that pays 7% and you have another one willing to pay you 12 and they have similar coverage forms or, you know, God bless it, be workers comp and they're willing to, willing to write it, you know, there, there's a, there's an easier argument there for for migration. Yes, that's a component of it. But that was going to be for your portion of the conversation. I was trying to I'm leave trying you, to make this more I of would, a dialogue. I was trying to leave you, know, you a bone just, there. I'm just I trying just to have tried a to throw you a bone banter you to jump in. So, so you you look at that data, you analyze it, and there's a way to create visual interpretations of this data, and then uh, that information drives the decision making. Oh, that's who you're talking to. Yeah. Uh, uh huh. I got it. Okay. It's why I can actually sound somewhat smart. This guy's way smarter than both of us. By a lot. Yeah. Um, so then you have that information, and then if you guys keep acquiring, it may mean death to a division if you don't have access to a carrier and so you've got to talk to each of those division whoever's running those divisions how critical is it and then compare it against the data and then someone's got to make a decision you know is there anything that can overlap so let's say for example we've got let's say travelers that is against allied and Al nationwide Yes, nationwide. Ally doesn't exist. Anymore, I know. I I'm, there's, they all keep acquiring each other. But anyway. I don't think Allied has been a brand for like seven years. I'm old and my memory is going. Anywho. You want to talk about Golden Eagle too? Yes. <laughs> Golden Eagle, Reliance. Re Reliance? That's yeah. Before I got in the business. I know. But anyway, you may find that that acquisition only had access to this one carrier and as far as their niche, but they didn't know that this other carrier also wrote this type of business and commission splits could be different, contingencies, and hey, if we combine together, not only contingencies go up, but the commission splits as well. Um, and so part of it's an education process and you've got to get everybody on the same page there, but it starts with clean data. And unfortunately, most of you struggle with actually starting with clean data. So the first project you have is a clean data project, and you've got to find people who are able and willing to take 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 that challenge on. You said takele, takele. It's a new first term. You, first, you need people that are willing and able to <laughs> tinkle. <laughs> Not tinkle, takele. I heard tinkle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jordan, finish your thought. Here's your bone. Go ahead. Thanks. Commissions. I, I'm done tinkling. So um, 
I, I think one of the bigger problems is you're never going to find, unless it is a statutory form, uh, like in California, workers' comp, you're never going to find carriers uh, in terms of consolidation that if you move from one to another, the policy form is going, going to be identical. It's just not going to happen. So you have to make sure what you're doing is still in the best interest of your insured. Now, I would argue that having better relationships with carriers and more volume and therefore being able to have more pull and more say um, could be in the best interest of your insured, even if it doesn't seem like it, even if they had a couple of few other bells and whistles with, with one carrier. I mean, you got to look on a case by case basis, but there is something to be said about making sure you're not spread out too thin amongst the carriers and really building solid partnerships, particularly when things go south with loss ratios, et cetera, you go, Hey, we've been together a long time. We have this big book. Uh, and so it, it protects a lot of the insurance. So you got to make sure the, f- the forms are good, um, or, or at least comparable, uh, and then really, I mean, I would say a lot of it is, is, like Justin said, it's a numbers game. But I think on the commission and contingency side, I think in today's day and age, look, none of us know at this point what this COVID thing is going to do um, You know, six months, a year from now in terms of it, economically. Like, Let's assume the virus is completely gone in a year from now, right? A vaccine comes out or whatever, and it, it's completely annihilated. How much damage was caused in the economy from it, that's that's irreparable um, in some kind of a short time frame. So you need to be doing what you can to protect the jobs at your agency, and that means negotiating the best contracts. So it's yes, you got to protect your insureds. Yes, you have to do right by the carriers, but you also have an obligation to your employees to make sure that revenue is coming in to protect their family and their livelihoods. So I, I, it, it's actually a fun project for me. I, anything that's numbers based is, is fun for me. Uh, so I, I wouldn't look at it as a headache. Find someone. Here's what I've learned. One of probably the best lessons I've learned in my whatever 13 years we've had Goodman is there are so many things that I hate doing that I think are terrible things to do that actually other people love to do, right? And just like you might look at this project, like this sounds like a giant headache and how do I even tackle it? There would be people like me who'd be like, oh yeah, no, 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 I want this one. This sounds fun, right? So find the person that this is fun for and they're going to do a way better job at you, a way better job than you and, and perform for the agency on another level that would really help it out. Or that person is so ambitious and they say, hey, I get bored, I just, I want a challenge, and maybe they don't love numbers, but they just want to be busy and active and love challenges, right? When they throw that out there, you come back at them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You looking at me? I'm looking at you (laughs) because it's someone on our total CSR team who loves challenges. I do declare. All right. Don't you feel like you should say that with this drink? I do declare. If we had the big hats, yeah. we should have dressed up differently. We should have dressed up. We had a, we could have had a theme. If Olivia was here, she would have had us dressed up. And I know, but she lives in another state. Dubuque, Iowa. You're really giving away where she lives? <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll be editing that part out. I mean, you could probably get it on LinkedIn, so it's probably not a big this, deal. This is true, and there's like 11 people that live there. So. <laughs> that doesn't help you. <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. Well, everyone, thank you for listening. Uh, I apologize for my brother, Olivia. Um, I apologize to all of you for him recommending you find people who are capable of tinkling. and <laughs> Tinkling. Tinkling. Um What's that phone number you wrote down there? You have a new way of asking questions. So instead of emailing. Oh, I didn't even, like. Yeah. You weren't going to say anything. I, I that, was. We didn't I was even waiting plan that. Us. Like, that was perfect. Yeah. So the new number, you can reach me at text me 949 354 6793. Mine is 867 5309. Oh, you're copying my t shirt now. 
But again, if you've got questions on drinks or suggestions, go to Jordan. Otherwise, text me. Cheers.